been down but no more liquor in this town no more liquor in this town first things first if you want to see the tablature for this tune visit us at this link that's appearing up here this link will take you to patreon.com slash clifton hicks for a very low monthly contribution you get the tab for this, you get uh, direct access to me, you get invited to our uh, top secret discord group, and uh, you'll see like photos of antique banjos that I post and other things that I don't share anywhere else, only on the Patreon group. So please do visit us up there. Like I said, you get the tab for this is the main, the main thing. Okay. Oh, and... Let's talk about the history real quick. Raleigh and Spencer's burning down. It's real common, at least for me, I've heard many people say, oh, that's a Civil War tune. They're talking about when the Yankees came through North Carolina, they burned down Raleigh, the capital, and they burned down Spencer, which is like a nearby railroad town uh, somewhere in Eastern Carolina. I've never been there. Um, and I always kind of just assumed that was true, took it for granted. But, you know, if you actually do the research into the Civil War period, General Sherman did capture Raleigh in 1865, but it was surrendered. They didn't have to lay siege and fight for it like they did with Richmond and Atlanta, for example, which they destroyed and burned to the ground. But Raleigh was actually never burned during the Civil War. It didn't sustain serious damage. I'm sure there was some damage, but it was never burned down. So that's not a Civil War reference. And also the town of Spencer, North Carolina, it didn't exist in the Civil War. It was founded as a, as a railroad hub uh, in the 1890s. So who knows, somebody who knows, maybe if you live in the local area and you know for sure where the song comes from, or you can give us some history, like when did Spencer, North Carolina burn down? <laughs> and when was it, was there, a, there was a series of great fires in Raleigh over its history, but trying to peg down a date for this, I haven't been able to, but it's safe to say since Spencer was founded in the 1890s, that this song came about probably sometime after 1890. But the tune itself could be much older, probably is. My actual tuning for this piece, I like to use, uh, it's a variant of F sharp D, G, A, D. People call that Doc Boggs tuning because Doc Boggs used it frequently. Um, I just decided to use that tuning for this song. My actual tuning is E flat, B, E, F sharp, and B again. So understand that I'm just relatively tuned lower from F sharp D, G, A, D. Now I learned this song originally, I think, from a recording of Tommy Gerald. He plays it solo on the fiddle. He kind of does a slow, uh, sort of free rhythm uh, fiddle accompaniment and sings the words over the fiddle. I also, when I lived in North Carolina years ago, it was a pretty common tune at the festivals and stuff up there and the jam scene. So. I probably learned it as well from seeing people like uh, Josh Hayes uh, and Matt Kenman play it on the banjo. I've, I'm sure I've seen Steve Kruger play it on the fiddle when I lived up there. Like I said, it was pretty common, but I but I know that I, early on I heard that recording of Tommy Gerald. Look that up. That's a great recording of Tommy Gerald on the fiddle with it. So. Probably guys like you know Josh when I when I've seen people up banjo players around Western North Carolina when they play this tune they're probably in what's known as sawmill tuning G D G C D it's probably probably what they would use for this again I'm using the Doc Boggs tuning F sharp D G A D. Okay, how do we actually play this piece of music? I like to to hold my left trigger finger on the third string at the second fret pretty much holding that throughout most of the most of the piece um, and then I'm coming down with my ring finger on the second string at the third fret and I'm doing that also on the first string at the third fret and then um, 
With my middle finger, I'm coming down on the bass string at the third fret. So this, this, you know, this area in here, it gives you lots of bluesy sounds. You can play a lot of these old kind of dark bluesy sounding numbers. So anyhow, okay. So I showed you my chord shapes, talked about the history there. It's really all you, all you need to know. Um, I won't bore you to death with a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's just, it's a, it's a little ditty that you repeat over and over again. It's not a typical A part, B part fiddle tune. Uh, go ahead and visit us up here if you want the, uh, if you want the tab for it. That'll break down exactly how I play it. We'd love to have you join us. Okay, thanks for looking.